Well, howdy, folks, and welcome to the channel. Today, we are at Wickenburg, Arizona for their Gold Rush Treasure Day show and celebration. So look at all these people behind me here, all lining up for the parade, and we'll show you that here in just a few minutes. So for those of you who don't know about Wickenburg, it was actually discovered back in 1863 by a guy by the name of Henry Wickenburg, and he had immigrated from Austria. And he came out here and found the vulture mine. Now, some of you probably heard about the vulture mine here in Arizona. And so we'll go be visiting that in a little bit. So anyhow, this is their town celebration. they got a parade going on. They've got all kinds of other activities as well as uh, uh, crafts and fairs, gold panning contests. And we're just going to show you the sights all around this town. So anyhow, just look at that crowd behind me there. Just starting to fill up. It's going to be a huge parade route. It's going to be totally awesome. So anyway, let's go ahead and get started. Okay. <laughs> well, sounds like we're going to have a trial. Somebody go fetch the judge. Oh, 
We are in the arts and crafts section of the show here. It's amazing. There's literally miles of booths. I mean, just all kinds of stuff to look at. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to show you some of the neat things that are here, just to take a few snapshots, just to give you a little flavor of what's out here. It's just totally amazing. Okay, folks, we're here at the panning booth, and we're just going to check out some gold. We've got a pay bag of pay dirt here. We're going to put it in our pan, and we're going to pan it out and see how much we get. So let's go ahead and do that. We're just going to set the pan down here in the water, and let's pour in some pay dirt. Let's see what they got in here. Now ah, let's just dump the whole thing in, right? There we go. Okay. So now we're going to go ahead and process it. So the first thing we do is going to put plenty of water in here, get this material nice and wet. Okay. All right. And so the first thing we're going to do is what we call stratify. And yeah, you're going to get wet. All right, so get back down here and we'll show you we're going to stratify this. Or we're just going to swish around, get out of that gold to settle on the bottom. Okay, and then we're going to tip it up and we're going to do our cut. Now the water here is pretty shallow, but we'll make it work anyway. There we go. I'm going to move this out of the way. Yeah, there's not a lot of black sand in this. I see a little bit. There we go. Now we're starting to get down to the black sand. You see it starting to show up on the corner of the pan. I'm gonna tap it here a little bit and get that gold to settle down. And you see the black rock in here. You know, that's more of iron, iron oxides. A little piece of quartz right here. Get rid of that, point. Okay. All right, let's see if we got any gold in this pan. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna turn it around. I'm gonna tap it. I'm going to spin it around this way and let's see if we get, oh, there's gold already showing. I see it already up here in the top. Look at that. Already gold. Let's get that big rock out of there. Look at all that gold showing up. Woo! Isn't that great? Look at that. Look at that. Oh, there's some nice chunkies in here. Beautiful. Beautiful, beautiful. Look at all that gold just merging there. Isn't that sweet? Look at that pile of gold. Pretty good. Yeah. Okay, folks, we're here with Lisa, and she's working this miller table down here, and she's going to take the concentrates that I got and put it on there and uh, see if we can kind of clean it up a little bit. All right. Ready? Yeah, so go ahead and pour it right on there. So, Lisa, how long have you been gold prospecting? For two years. Two years? So you're new kind of to this. Well, yes. Uh-huh. Uh... -huh. uh I actually bought the mines. Do you have mines. a significant other that probably dragged you out to the gold field? Not at all. Not at all, huh? Uh, no, I'm an entrepreneur and I wanted to do something fun, so I bought three patented load claims. Fantastic. Up, uh, off of Castle Hot Springs Road, North Mine Road. Uh huh. And I made six miles of road to get us up there, and we do outdoor adventures at our gold mine, and we take people on air conditioned all terrain vehicle rides to the mines to see what we've got going on there. We do gold panning, we show people on day adventures and even overnight adventures on how to do the gold. So oh, that um, that's what we do. Oh, that is great. Let's see how we're doing down here. Oh my gosh, that took nothing to clean it, did it? It took nothing to clean it. <laughs> it just does it right for you. Yeah, there that's you go. the beauty of it. It gets all the black sand out and everything sticks right yeah, on the folks. table. It's really just nice. Sliding it right up there, getting it all lined up and put it in the bottle. That's it. I think I gotta give you the bottle. You do have to. Yeah. All right, put a little water in it. There we go. All right. I also own the hotel in Morristown. Oh, in, in Morristown. On Grand Avenue, and I paired it with my gold mining adventure so that I'm doing oh. cowboy barbecues and making a saloon, and we're going to do gold panning right there also. Oh, that's I'm going to bring dirt down from my uh, gold mines called the Luxury Gold Mine, and we're going to just have fun down there at the hotel, too. Oh, I'm sure you'll get a lot of people in there. Yeah, it's fun. 
That's it. Boy, that's some really fine stuff in there, isn't it? It is. Guess what? I'm going to get it in your bottle. Yeah, it'll stick on the rim if you're not careful. There we go. All righty. All of it. Thank you so much. Well, thank you so much for the interview. I appreciate it. Thank you for getting my gold here. I much appreciate it. Look at that, guys. Right on. All right. Thank you very much. Have a great day. Thank you. We are at the Henry Wickenburg house. This was built back in 1903. It's in the town of Wickenburg. So let's go in and check it out. Here we go. We're going to walk on inside here. Oh, yeah. Take a look at this. Wow. Really nice. Hello there. Are you the curator of the uh, house? And what's your name? Cindy. Cindy. Good to meet you. I'm Alan. Yeah. And this is my wife, Shannon. Yeah. So can we take a little tour around the uh how much you want to know there's a lot to know or there's a little to know depending on what you want oh well probably a lot sounds good okay. for all my viewers and everything so okay. are you familiar with Baltimore? uh no we're going to go visit that okay yep well, mm -hmm. henry wickenberg discovered the Baltimore in 1863 um it was one of the most productive mines ever found in arizona and um he couldn't afford to um reef the ore, so to speak. So he sold the ore for $15 a ton uh, to people that uh, wanted to um, test test the ore. And Pretty good price for back then. Yeah, yeah. But he eventually sold the mine in 1866 to uh, a gentleman from New York named Mr. Phelps. Um, at the time, the purchase price was $85,000. He only received $25,000 for the purchase price because they said he couldn't provide clear title uh, to the mine. Hmm. And ideally, he had a number of um, partners that worked with him originally, and they deserted him. And then he found the Baltimore mine after that time, and the former partners sued Henry Wickenberg for part of the proceeds because <laughs> the they got jealous. appeared to be. A wealthy one. And yep. then Mr. Phelps only gave Henry Rickenberg $25,000 out of the 85 because he said that he couldn't provide clear title basically because of what um, his former partners had sued him for part of the proceeds. So. That's a very interesting story. Never heard of that. That's yeah. a, and a technicality kept him from probably becoming a very wealthy man. Well, you know? And you'll read stories that he died penniless. He did not. Uh, he still retained uh, a portion of the vulture mine. Mm -hmm. um, he was deeded 160 acres in the downtown area by Rutherford B. Hayes in 1879. Henry um, split that property into lots and sold them. Uh, he also had other... Um, uh, claims up in Gillette in Black Canyon City and sold those for as much as he got for the vulture mine. And then if you read uh, what the assessor has in their historical documents, there are at least two pages of deeds and documents and mortgages that um, are attributed to Henry Wickenburg. Wow, that's, a, that's really interesting. Right. And yeah. the thing is, he ended up... Uh, uh, Helene Holland was his beneficiary. She was not a relative. She was a lady that took care of Henry Wickenberg until he died from about 1901 to 1905. And he made a deal with her while he was still alive that if she would take care of him, he would deed her his personal property. And upon his death, then she would end up with his mining claims and his money and his property. Wow, good for her. Well, what 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 day or what time did he die? When did he die? Uh, May 14th, 1905. 1905. Oh, very we good. We are at the Vulture Mine and also Vulture City. Now, Vulture City is a ghost town created back in 1863. Henry Wickenburg, of course, was established here. And there's a lot of historical artifacts throughout this town. So we're just going to take a little stroll and uh, look at things. Now, behind me is the active Vulture Mine. Okay, we can't get back in there because obviously they got mining operations and it's not safe. But if you look carefully, you can kind of see the people back there running equipment. So it is an active mine. And uh, you can see it's got quite a quite an open pit there. 
check out this massive jaw crusher right here. It's obviously they added a diesel engine or a gasoline engine to it to operate. But you can see that the crusher's back here. Jaws are right up in here. Of course, the engine turns this big, huge flywheel system and belt. And that causes the jaws to close in and out and crush all the rock. Of course, the rock falls through the bottom and then it goes out to further processing. Engine here. That's incredible. It's huge. 60,000 pounds. Wow. This whole building was moved in the last year. Uh huh. So it's not in its original location. Uh huh. Right. Right. This came out of the submarine that powered the town in the late, well, the early 20th century. Look at the size of those cylinders up there, folks. That's incredible. Here in one of the work garages here, I guess, to work on vehicles and things that operate for the mine. You know, the oil, tools, all the odds and ends. Pretty cool. Hey folks, check out this little grinder here. Isn't this cool? Pretty. Hey, y'all want to come out for a ride? Jump into this water truck and go out and help supply the mine. Now here we have an example of one of the head frames that uh, came from the mine. Obviously it's not by the shaft, it's been moved. But you can see it all the way to the top there where the main wheel is that uh, hoists the core cart. Behind me is the cable winch system that they use for hauling the ore cars as well as the miners in and out of the shaft. Okay, you see this big huge cable drum over here, the cable right up here. Okay, and that goes all the way up to the upper part of the upper part of the uh, head frame and then pull the cars up and down. You can also see in here, you got your main shaft, you have your braking system to help break the uh, drum. So that way, as you're lowering or raising things up, you can adjust the different levels down in the mine. You've got these huge, massive flywheels that operate this thing. And of course, there's probably belts attached to it. And then we got these levers here. So you had an operator that actually ran this thing and they would move these levers back and forth to move that drum to lower, raise and lower all the uh, or, uh, the cart up and down in the, inside the shaft. So quite an amazing piece of equipment. I'm here next to a pile of pipe here. This is all hand manufactured steel piping that they used for the mine to actually move water 12 miles from the source to the mill site to help process the ore. Now this is all hand fabricated, so they had to roll all this steel. And if you look carefully, you can see the rivets here that binds up the steel. I mean, that has to be quite an accomplishment to keep it from leaking for 12 miles. That's pretty amazing. And you can see a union joint kind of up over here that uh, joins the pipe sections together. So a pretty amazing work for over 100 years ago. Now I'm standing here at the, what is a mine shaft, okay? It doesn't look like it, obviously. They've redone it. doesn't have your typical head frame on or the collaring or anything. But you can see down in this shaft. So come on over here and check it out. Now obviously they have this uh, gridded off for safety reasons. But we're going to see if we can get the camera kind of down through the grid here and see if we can take a look down that shaft. Look down there, you see those lights shining? That goes down several hundred feet, and then there's like 12 miles of tunneling all through there. Hey, hey Jeff. Jeff, are you down there? This is what used to be the Wells Fargo Bank. Hey, can I get some money in here? Hey, I wanna make a withdrawal. They don't got any money in here. Let's go see what's inside this bank. See what they got. Obviously, they don't got any money. Got some typewriters, some files. Oh, we got some bank bags up there, too. Look at that. Too bad they're not full of loot. Oh, and yeah, here's the uh, little file area, newspapers. So how many are old enough to know what these things are? If you know what these are, put it down in the comment section. Hey, so what's a mining camp without a brothel? So let's go inside and see what they have. Yeah, perhaps a first class place for back in the day. Yes, sir. Look at that. And of course, when you're done with the, the uh, brothel, you come over here. This is the doctor's office where you can receive certain medical care. I am standing underneath what is the famous hanging tree. It's an ironwood tree that's well over 160 years old. And this is where 18 miners met their end for stealing ore out of the mine. You know, obviously it's called high grading and that's where they take the ore out of the mine, the high grade gold that you see in the quartz. They stick in their pockets and take it home with them. And that's how they made a few extra bucks. Well, those that got busted got hung.
This is the assay office. It's quite a nice building. Here's an inside look of the assay office. All the furnace equipment. You can see the crucibles and, uh, and other containers in the back there, all mixed in. All the different uh, things they needed for assaying the ore. Of course, it's very important when they're mining that uh, they take assay samples along the way to make sure they're following the correct course. Make sure they stay in the high grade of the vein. There's a nicely restored utility truck. Probably uses a fire truck as well. Beautiful condition. Check that out. And as we swing on over here, here's another restored wagon. Looks like it could almost be used as a hearse too. Look at that. Beautiful condition. Any of you folks out there restoring old cars? I think they got some parts out here for you. There's a live blacksmith shop, all these horseshoes. Yeah, we got ourselves some ponies and burros down here. Yeah. Hello there. <laughs> well, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, be sure to smash that like button and also hit the share button so you can share it with all your friends. And if you're new to the channel, Hit that subscribe button and a little bell so that way you can get future updates on all my gold mining videos. And in the meantime, I wish you the very best in your prospecting adventures. Get out there and find some gold, and we'll see you next time, and thank you for watching.